Welcome. For those that are first time visitors or viewers, if you will, of today's service, my name is Pastor Rudy and I am the pastor of this fine church. And I want you to know that here at St. George's, our whole purpose and our desire is to love God and to love people. So as we come together, uh, let us keep in our hearts and our minds all of those around this nation and the world that are suffering during these times. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. And we invite you into our presence. We thank you, Lord, for being in this place. So as we end this year and we consider all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, let our hearts, let our hearts be encouraged now I ask that you bless your band servant, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. For it is in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. And now, if you will, will you join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, if you will, will you join me in affirming our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come, the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
Today's reading is Luke 2, 22 through 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by law of Moses, Joseph of Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolence of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of re revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is, a, is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penel of the tribe of Aster. She was very old and she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then uh, was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to whom all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and grace of God was on. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our sermon title for today's message is The Presence of the Lord is Here. In this week's gospel lesson, Jesus is presented in the temple. At this point, he is only a few weeks old, yet he has already been recognized by one Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, angels and shepherds, and later he'll even be recognized by the wise man. Nevertheless, in verse 22, we learn when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. In those days, the purification rites only applied to the mother. According to the law, the mother was considered unclean for 40 days if she gave birth to a boy or for 80 days if she gave birth to a girl. During that time, the mother wasn't allowed to go to the temple or to even handle holy objects. So when it came time for Mary to receive her purification rites, 
they took Jesus with them to be consecrated. Notice, from the very beginning, Luke makes it very clear that Jesus is indeed obedient to the law. At the same time, Luke also confirms the devotion of Mary and Joseph. Because in the Old Testament, the law of Moses was very important. Because it was God's plan for salvation for the Jewish people. However, in the New Testament, Jesus is God's plan for salvation for all people. So it is understandable as to why Jesus said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. In doing so, verse 23 and 24 states, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two pigeons. So Jesus begins his early life in obedience to the law. Verse 25, the Bible tells us, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It is in this particular scripture that we are introduced to Simeon who, was, who has spent a lifetime waiting for the Lord. Now, God has fulfilled his promise and Simeon has seen the Savior. Surely, over the years, Simeon has prayed a thousand prayers, hoped a thousand hopes, and suffered a thousand disappointments. Finally, his prayer has been answered, and he can now die in peace. God has rewarded his waiting. First point, wait on the Lord. Church family, many of us are very impatient and have come to expect instant gratification. Simply put, we really don't like to be kept waiting. Yet, we often say that anything worth having is worth waiting for. So let us keep in mind that God is still at work, still wrapping the package, still preparing the gift to fit our needs and preparing us for the gift. We need to pray, church. We need to pray not just for the gift, but also for the patience to wait for God's unveiling. Then in verse 26 and 27, we learn that it had been revealed to him, Simeon, by the Holy Spirit that he would die, he would not die, before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Just as Luke emphasized the significance of the law earlier, he now emphasizes the significance of the Spirit. Upon the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us that Simeon took him, Jesus, in his arms, and he praised God, saying these words, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Then in verse 30 through 32, Simeon says these words, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, 
Israel. In this particular text, Simeon reveals God's plan for salvation, which leads us to our second point. Point number two, salvation is available to all. Church family, salvation is something that God has prepared for each and every one of us. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But our hope lies not in ourselves, but in God's grace and in our faith in Jesus the Christ. So it is understandable that in verse 33, we are told that the child's father and the child's mother marveled at what was said about him. Then in verse 34, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. Church family, while Jesus is indeed a light, the fact of the matter is this. Anyone who turns on light creates shadows. Jesus will indeed be a friend to tax collectors and even sinners, but the religious authorities, well, they will oppose him at every turn. And ultimately, they will succeed in killing him. Simeon confirms that in verse 35, where he said that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. At the cross, the sword that pierces Jesus' side will also be the same sword that will pierce Mary's heart. God has certainly honored Mary by choosing her to be the mother of the Messiah, but that honor will not ease her pain. Then in verse 36 and 37, Luke tells us there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped. She worshipped night and and day, fasting, fasting and praying. Like Simeon, Anna was indeed devout. She was old and a prophet. Like Simeon, she recognized Jesus as our Messiah. Both Simeon and Anna lived faith-filled lives and were in constant prayer. Then in verse 38, the Bible says, coming up, to them at that very moment, she gave thanks. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Point number three, thank God for Jesus. Church family like Anna, we are to always give thanks to God for our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. In closing, verse 39 states, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Then verse 40 states, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. So again, as we depart from this place, but not from the spirit, let us all remember three things. Number one, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Number two, salvation is available to all, every man, woman, or child. And number three, thank God for Jesus. So be it. And now for the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep each and every one of us from falling 
and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be all power and dominion. Be thine. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.